Advisors with RIAs, known as Investment Advisor Representatives or IARs, are growing rapidly, while broker-dealer registered reps are declining. Maybe this is the best future for you, too. Let's find out. This is The Rare Advisor, proud to be a part of the Advisor Advancement Network and home of a business model supercharged by recurring and repeatable events. Your host is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. He is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member of FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Hey, welcome back here at The Rare Advisor. Today, I want to revisit a conversation I had not long ago about the fact that advisors are flocking to RIAs, most specifically corporate RIAs. So the corporate RIA has essentially become the BD or the broker dealer of the future. It used to be when we all started in this industry, uh, we were registered reps of broker dealers. Uh, and now today there is a growing, growing, growing number of investment advisor reps of RIAs. So IARs uh, are the new RRs and corporate RIAs are the new broker-dealer. Uh, that's where the growth is. In fact, uh, another article from Investment News, this is from March 14th, advisors flock to RIAs in the new normal. The RIA channel saw a net gain of 1,530 financial advisors in 2021, while the warehouses had a net loss of 2,065. So the question becomes, first of all, how and why is that happening? And I will argue that it is especially true among younger advisors who do not have large blocks of business with broker-dealer brokerage type accounts. Uh, because if you were starting over from scratch today or you didn't have a large block of business, it would make absolute total sense to operate as an IAR. Now, I would argue that most RIAs should not be RIAs. Now, some should, don't get me wrong. There is always a place for that. But at the retail level, a lot of groups or a lot of advisors who have gone out to become kind of one-man show RIAs, they don't really understand the entire liability and risk that they are taking on by doing that uh, until they end up in trouble with the SEC or the State Securities Bureau uh, because of an audit that goes awry or whatever the case might be. Uh, so most of the growth is coming in the corporate RIA sector where advisors are joining as IARs because they still need somebody else to run shotgun for them on all that oversight, supervision, suitability, uh, the, the, uh, the fact that you need to be even more careful in the RIA space than you do in the registered rep space uh, in terms of having that fiduciary responsibility. So that comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of burden attached to it. So that IAR is a growing, growing area. Now, <clears throat> excuse me about that. Sorry about that. Now, in that space, uh, if you, again, to go back to where I was, uh, where I was first stating this, in that space, if you don't have a large block of legacy business, it makes total sense to shed your registered rep status and just become an IAR. Uh, and if you were starting new, if you were young in this industry, you probably don't even need to become an RR, a registered rep. Just become an IAR uh, and deal with assets under management. You can still have your insurance licensor, uh, licensure in place and you can still be working with FIAs. Uh, you can be working with life insurance and everything else, but you don't need to necessarily have that old school RR scenario there. Now, on the other hand, why would you keep your registered rep status with a broker dealer? Well, probably because you've been in the industry for a while and you've got a large block of legacy business. Then it makes total sense that you're going to want to maintain a broker dealer relationship because you've got all kinds of business on the books that's paying 12B1s and various other things uh, that simply aren't ready or able to move to the new level of an asset under management platform. And you don't want to walk away from those clients. You don't want to abandon them. You don't want to not service them. And obviously, there's probably a revenue stream there. So you don't want to abandon that either. But that's because you have an old, large legacy block that is inside of your practice or part of who you are as an advisor in this world. So 
When we look at USA Financial, for example, we are a broker dealer. We are a corporate RIA. We are also a third party asset manager. We run a TAMP platform. We do lots of different things here. But on our traditional broker dealer platform, it grows. It continues to grow all the time, but it's usually because advisors are joining USA Financial and they have a legacy block of business they bring with them to the broker dealer side. When we actually look at new business coming in the door, Corporate RIA versus broker dealer. The corporate RIA is what's bringing in the new transactions, the assets under management. So think about where you are in your practice today. What's important to you? Where is the future going? That will determine for you what you need to do, what affiliations you should continue to have or should uh, pare down to depending on your status. So there's not one single answer for everyone. There's a right answer there for you. It depends on what is your right fit so that you can grow your practice into the future. Now, I will say this. If you are only a registered rep, if you are only an insurance agent and you do not have a Series 65 license, if you're not operating as an IAR, you are missing out on the maximum growth area in your practice. So that piece, I can tell you for sure. The rest of it, it depends on how you're structured, how long you've been in the business, and what do you want your future to look like. This information is for licensed financial professionals only and is not intended for use in soliciting sales from the public. The views expressed represent the opinions of the presenter or their featured guest, not necessarily those of USA Financial or its affiliated subsidiaries. Industry references are generic and not intended to represent actions or beliefs of any individual or entity. Content is only presented to illustrate general principles, beliefs, or ideas and should not be construed as legal or regulatory advice. Trademark and copyright protected. USA Financial and Affiliates.